Good evening. I'm going to call the Board of Selectmen's meeting for May 14th, 2018 to order. Excuse me. Thank you. As required by open meeting law, we are informing you that we will be video, audio taping, as well as live broadcasting this public meeting. In addition, anyone in the audience wishing to video or audio tape must notify the chairman now. Hearing no one, please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Anyone for weekly briefing? Mr. Chairman, where do you want me to do the ballot one? Uh, you can do it right now. Okay. Uh, I do have, uh, I'm not going to go up to the podium, I'm just going to speak from my, uh, my seat here, but just uh, as a result of uh, town meeting, uh, there's certain implications that the uh, town meeting actions have had on the ballot that's for tomorrow. And I just wanted to uh, just let people be aware of that prior to uh, getting into the meeting. Uh, on the ballot questions, uh, question number one is in regards to phase two of the comprehensive wastewater management plan. Uh, that did require a two-thirds vote at town meeting, and that was favorably received by town meeting and, and voted in the affirmative. So if that is voted at town meeting, it was a contingent vote at the town meeting. If at the town election it is voted uh, by simple majority, then that project will move forward. Uh, on number two uh, is the roadway project, and this is something that we have in the capital plan. Uh, town meeting did approve. Uh, again, by more than two-thirds uh, to approve that. That was contingent upon a, ca a, a debt exclusion vote. Uh, so a yes vote on that would authorize us to do $700,000 worth of work on the roadways for the next fiscal year. Ballot question number three is for the uh, Fire Station 2 project. Uh, that also required a two-thirds vote at town meeting and that was um, voted uh, in affirmative uh, above that two-thirds requirement. So if that is approved uh, at the ballot, then that contingency goes into place. Uh, people probably say, well, why are you reading all this? And it's really the next three that, that have a significance. Uh, ballot question number four is in regards to the construction of a uh, pet uh, cemetery and a, a, a cremation retort, a cremation unit. Uh, town meeting, uh, there was a request for no action on that. So uh, without a, an appropriation, uh, if the ballot were to be voted in affirmative, there is no corresponding vote to authorize the spending of the money. And I want to be careful to say it for this year. So if there were a favorable vote on this, it could be considered next year. So I don't want people to to think that we're springing something. That's not the intent. The intent was to have a, a, uh, a process that if town meeting voted it, then it would be funded through the, the uh, debt exclusion route. So if folks that um, do not want to see that uh, under consideration, uh, they probably should vote no if they don't want to see consideration. If there was a large yes vote, then there could conceivably be, that would be something the board would have to consider, uh, putting that back on for town meeting for next year. So an authorization is an authorization, whether it's at town meeting or whether it's at the ballot. And that's the, the main purpose of why I want to make sure people are aware of the significance of number four. Uh, number five and number six are the, the two regarding the Monomoy Regional School. One was for a capital exclusion to fund the bathrooms at the uh, facility, at the stadium field. Uh, because this was a capital exclusion specifically only for one year, fiscal year 2018, and because there was a substitute motion made and was favorably voted at town meeting to fund this out of free cash and not out of this, uh, even if this was voted yes, it doesn't have a place because town meeting did not authorize this uh, expenditure. They funded it through free cash. And on Article 6, uh, basically the same thing. There's 36000 for uh, the creation of the Harwich portion of the assessment to create a uh, stabilization fund for one fiscal year. And because that's a capital exclusion and it was funded separately at town meeting, uh, there is no uh, authority to expend that money for the one year. 
So five and six, no matter how they're voted, it becomes irrelevant. And I just want to make sure people are aware of that. There's a contingency <coughs> component to it. And then number seven is still very much uh, relevant. It is for charter amendments, and I would encourage folks that have that want to consider that that they read the material on the uh, ballot carefully and weigh those considerations appropriately. Thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Chairman, to uh, kind of make sure that we inform folks of that for tomorrow. Thank you, Chris. What are the polls open tomorrow? Uh, 7 a.m. to and they close at 8 p.m. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else for weekly briefing? John, I see you're out there. Could you just give, I've been asked a lot this week, could you just give a slight update on what's going to happen at the harbor uh, or where we're at with the project and if it's going to be open for Memorial Day weekend, the ramp? Sure. Specifically in the back. <coughs> John Rendon, Harbor Master. Um, so Memorial Day weekend, the 25th, Friday the 25th, the ramp will be open and it'll stay open uh, through Monday. Um, that's the first opportunity our slip permit holders will be allowed to uh, come into the harbor. Our west dock should be totally uh, finished. Uh, water, electric, fire suppression, the only thing it won't have is the wireless internet hookup yet. But, um, and then we're finishing up the east dock. The last floats get delivered uh, uh, Monday the 21st. That's the last set of floats. They'll be spending that week putting them all together. But the east dock won't be totally done yet, but probably the week after we should be in a good, good shape to then uh, have, everybody, have everybody come in. So the, the ramp for the public um, will be open for the weekend, but then it'll close Tuesday through Friday to allow the contractors to finish up work. We'll open it up again that weekend, and hopefully it'll stay open at that point. Great. Thank you. John. Okay. Yes, sir. Public comment and announcement. Good evening. Cindy Williams, uh, Executive Director of the Harwich Chamber. I wanted to remind everyone that was at home, because this is who it really, truly affects, the Big Fix, which is a um, program through the Housing Assistance Corporation, the deadline for applications for people that need handiwork around the house, landscaping, exterior painting, um, small jobs like that. The um, deadline for the applications is June 1st. What I'd like to offer is to have anyone that needs help assisting with the application to come to my office down at the chamber and I'll help them complete the application. But again, this is a, the deadline of June 1st, so um, if anyone has any questions, they can contact me at the chamber. Also, I wanted to make sure everyone knew, I think I saw um, everyone there. I don't know where the camera is, Jamie, but I'm just gonna hold this up. This is the new Harwich Magazine, for anyone that has not seen it. This is available at the chamber as well as various other places, as well as Town Hall, Community Center, and um, this magazine this year, as everyone at town meeting found out, was dedicated to the memory of Jimmy Marceline, and there's a tribute um, article in there as well. So thank you very much. Thank okay. you, Cindy. Go Cindy? Ahead, yes, sir. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> just, yes, just Larry. Just people uh, your telephone number. 508-430-1165. Thank I you. Will, actually, I have one question, too. <clears throat> um, the criteria for the big fix they uh, isn't it a senior, no, I, senior and veteran? It's senior veteran. I have my glasses on here. One second. Senior veteran and disabled homeowners with cleanup, landscaping, and small home repair projects. Thank you. One sec. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> you look familiar. Hi. Which one? Um, <laughs> I would like to, uh, on behalf of the board, I would like to read this certificate of recognition presented to Janelle Brown. M. Brown, excuse me. On the occasion of her departure from the Howard Board of Selectmen in order to pursue personal goals and to spend some well-earned time with her family, we, the Howard Board of Selectmen, do hereby proclaim that whereas Janelle has pursued her duties with passion and whereas she has spent her time diligently working towards the establishment and op operation of the Howard Cultural Center and whereas Ms. Brown was proud to have grown up in the town in which she served, and whereas Janelle always strove to pursue her governmental duties and her family responsibilities with equal zeal, now therefore your colleagues on the Howitch Board of Selectmen recognize the occasion of your departure from the board and offer their best wishes for every good fortune for your future pursuits. I don't thank think you. I need to read the names, right? <laughs> I would like to um, thank you so, so much, and whoever wrote that, 
great job. One of you must have. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Nice. Thank you. Thanks so much. Congrats. Yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Dino. Thank you, Ed. Um, I, I'm just up here for, on a couple of items. One, I want to just to take the opportunity to thank all the folks that uh, helped put on the uh, Alzheimer's walk uh, on Saturday. It wasn't the best weather for it, but uh, there was a great group of volunteers, uh, some folks from the Cranberry Festival, some folks from the uh, Council on Aging Friends Group, and Council on Aging, um, that helped put it on uh, a spirited group of walkers. The surf tones uh, played music uh, to entertain the crowd. Uh, Broad Reach was the overall sponsor, but many other local businesses, Stop and Shop, Winslow Tavern, and Wellfleet. Um, Wingate uh, contributed to all of the prizes and refreshments, and uh, uh, they raised a fair amount of money. They could have, probably if weather had been better, they would have raised more, and I think uh, it's, uh, Alzheimer's is one of sort of the two most serious illnesses that uh, we're facing on Cape Cod, the other being the opioid epidemic. But these are the most pervasive that mm. affect most families and something we need to continue. The funds raised go to uh, fund the Alzheimer's Family Services of Cape Cod and Brewster, which provide a lot of very good services and training for air folks in our area. Um, and I know people have received services there and they're, they're a wonderful organization. Um, let's hope we can get a, a lot more out walkers out next year. <laughs> and the other, the other um, issue is uh, next, if anybody before, uh, Sluckman's meeting next Monday has a chance uh, from three to seven at Monomoy Regional High School. The uh, Cape Cod Blood Center is having a blood drive. Um, as I understand, some of their stocks are low and it'd be a good time to give. Um, I've been, I'm a six gallon plus giver um, and it's a, it's a very important thing. Uh, we had a recent, recently a, a member of our community needed a substantial amount of blood and it was there for them, but we need to refill it. Thank you, Ed. <coughs> Hi, good evening, Judy Wilson, the Council on Aging Director here in town and thank you for your service, Janelle. Um, I just wanted to make an announcement that May is Older Americans Month and we are kind of celebrating with some new programs at the Council on Aging. Um, we got a grant to purchase some fitness equipment. Um, the theme for the month is Engage at Every Age. And one of the things that we have started is a new fitness program um, for people of all fitness levels. It's a really affordable program and we are making it free for the month of May for anybody who wants to try it. We have a certified fitness instructor coming in. Um, it's called Healthy for Life. It uses small fitness equipment and um, one of the things that we have found uh, in terms of successful aging is that people who um, do things to really impact their social and physical and emotional health um, really do do better as they age. So we have some programs planned to support healthy aging. We have a skin cancer program, a snoring program, and this Healthy for Life program is really, um, we want to advertise that it is free for the month of May, and we're looking forward to people coming and trying it out. And after that, it will only be $2 a class. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Judy. Anyone else? Public comment? <coughs> okay, we're going to move on to the consent agenda. We're going to take B separately uh, as Thank uh, you, we're going to make some changes. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the following <coughs> consent, agent, uh, consent agenda items. A, accept the resignation of Joseph Powers to the Historic, Historical Commission, Community Preservation, and the Bylaw and Charter Review Committee, effective May 14, 2018. And C, approve application for change of officers, directors, uh, liquor license for Belmont Condominium Beach Club Corporation. Second. Moved and seconded to approve consent agen agenda items A and C. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 On B, we're going to remove um, uh, the uh, appointment for John Ketchum under Conservation Commission alternate. Uh, 
There is no alternate provision for con conservation. Uh, Don, do you want to just uh, speak on that? Yeah, I mean, that's correct. Uh, the, the other one that when I make the motion is, is going to be uh, Meg Peterson and the Housing Committee. Uh, the term, if it were to expire 2021, we have three members out of a five-member committee expiring in 2018. If you add three, three years to that, we will wind up with four out of five of them in the same, so we don't want that. Yeah. So uh, changing that to 19. To okay. three. And on the uh, conservation, am I correct on that? That you was are. brought forward by Larry. There was no provision for an alternate on conservation. You are. I mean, had the board decided to do that, there were a number of years ago that we changed the charter, I think it was three years ago, to the extent not prohibited by law, we could have expanded that. Uh, but I don't recall we this board or the previous board actually doing that. We're gonna let Amy talk. Amy? Thank you. Amy Usowski, Conservation Administrator for the town. I just want some clarification because um, <coughs> we've had two alternates positions available for quite a while now. Um, right now, we technically have Walter Diggs as an alternate. And it, it is my understanding that alternates cannot vote, um, but it is seen kind of more of a prep ground for being on the commission. Um, so, and I know that the um, potential applicant for, the, for this one was, was kind of aware of that. So I was just curious if, if that in fact was true that we can't have any, or can they be in the capacity of just have it be almost like a training ground to be full-time member of the commission when the slot gets opened. Larry. Well, I'm looking for clarification as well because years ago, some years ago, we had uh, worked to get an alternate on there for the reasons that Amy uh, talked about. And I actually thought, uh, I know I brought it up to this, uh, this meeting, uh, I think three different times that it wasn't, uh, it was incorrect that we didn't list an alternate for the conservation to continue. And, uh, I feel badly that I didn't catch that at the at the final uh, Warren article. I, I thought it had been taken care of. And I don't know if we have any leeway now or not to, as an alternate. Uh. Don. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It really is up to the board. I, w I was on the, uh, the chair of the uh, bylaw charter review committee at the time. We allowed for the fact that there could be alternates, but there was never a follow-on that changed any language where the Board of Selectmen said that they indeed wanted them because there was no authority prior to that. Well, if it's the board's, if it's up to the board, I have no problem with the motion being read as written and having an alternate for Amy. Right. But, uh, but to yeah. clarify, since we <coughs> haven't had them, I, I am unfamiliar entirely because the, the regulatory boards also answer to mass general law about whether they could vote or not. So I would suggest if we do that, that we have them as non-voting non -voting alternate. alternate. Go ahead, Ed. Oh. <laughs> yeah, at the time, uh, I believe you were still on the, on the board. We looked, at, we looked at having alternates primarily as a training and to involve people because at the time we were having people resign because of some uh, conflict of interest issues. They were people on the board that were landscapers and we needed to have people ready to fill in quickly rather than spending six months trying to get uh, a fourth and fifth member so you could make quorums easily. But the, the, the Mass General Law doesn't allow for alternates to, to be voting members in, in it as you would uh, expect an alternate to fill in. Thank you, Ed. And we, we follow in line with a lot of other towns have done. I think that was at a point when Ed and I could run a foot race together. You're not running anymore. I know. <laughs> that's, that's my point. Well, let me, uh, <laughs> let me move be, then. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, that we appoint uh, John Ketchum as the Conservation Commission alternate. As a non-voting. Pardon? As a non-voting. As a non-voting member. <laughs> it's ahead, read, read, the whole, read the whole motion. We'll do it all in one. I move the approve the committee appointments. John Ketchum for Conservation Commission alternate. Uh, non-voting member uh, to the term expiring June 30, 2021. Janet Evans, Treasury, Treasury Chess Committee alternate, term expiring June 30, 2021. Carol Thayer, bylaw slash charter review committee, uh, term expiring June 30, 2020. Meg Patterson, housing committee, term expiring June 30, 2019. 
second. Touch, uh, what? Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, okay. So moved and seconded to approve as read. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to public hearings and presentations, uh, I just want to announce C has been taking, taken off tonight. They could not make it, so we will be bringing C back next week, which is the uh, certification as a National Wildlife Federation community. Um, so on to the first public hearing, transfer to transfer of the Freedom Ferry Slip and Class F permit. Larry? Mr. Chair, I'll open the, uh, the meeting. The board, Howard's Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, May 14th, 2018, no earlier than 6.30 p.m. during the regularly scheduled meeting. This hearing will be held in the Don B. Griffin Room located at Town Hall, 732 Main Street, Harwich, for the purpose of determining whether to approve the proposed transfer of the Freedom Ferry Slip and Class F permit, including a assignee satisfaction of the off-site parking requirement all members of the public having an interest in this topic are cordially invited to attend the public hearing and provide information and testimony relevant to these proposals. Signed by the Harvest Board of Selectmen. Thank you, Larry. Public hearing is open. John? Yes, sir, if I may. Um, uh, Jack Sharon is uh, here tonight, and I'll have him come up and introduce himself and you know, tell you his direction. But just uh, real quick, um, Jack came before the Waterways Committee, um, uh, provided uh, kind of an overview of what his plan is and what the process is, and I have met with him on, uh, on numerous occasions as well. And um, I know the Waterways voted favorably, and uh, I, as the Harbor Master, recommend uh, you know the approval for him to uh, purchase uh, Freedom Ferry from Alan McMullen. Uh, he'll talk about what's involved in that. I think the plan currently is to maintain the off-site parking that is currently uh, being utilized uh, by the ferry. And as you know, part of our, our uh, development plan is to bring the ticketing operation over to uh, Waterside of 28, and, and that will happen. I'm not sure it's going to get there this year, but it is, and he's fully aware of that and fully supportive of that and <coughs> is on board with the direction that we're going. So obviously this is one of the single permits within the harbor that transfers with uh, the permit, the, the slip uh, transfers with the permit uh -huh. and with new ownership with the approval of, of the board. Um, and so it would be my recommendation to approve it. Thank you, John. Yes, sir. Jack. <coughs> Good evening, thanks for taking the time to, to hear me speak tonight. Um, John gave, gave a great overview of what we're looking to do. Uh, Alan and I have been talking about uh, the transfer of uh, his business well over a year now. So um, we've, we've really gotten into every detail. I want to give you a little bit about me and about uh, my plans for um, the ferry running from Sacratucket Harbor. About me, I uh, am for about four years, four school years actually, uh, full-time on the Cape. Previous to that, uh, we had a vacation home here in Harwich. I currently live in Chatham. Um, my roots in Harwich are, are deep. I used to work at Thompson's Clam Bar back in the early 90s and really keep finding myself coming back. But um, f as far as uh, the, the business, really this year, um, very much the same as it has been. This is actually the 25th year of the Freedom Ferry going out of Sacquatucket Harbor to Nantucket. Um, the staff is uh, going to remain the same. Um, I'm looking forward to learning a lot from them. Some of them have been working on the boat for nearly 20 years. So um, the staff is going to stay the same. The schedule is going to stay the same, which is regulated through the Steamship Authority. Um, and we're going to stay same spot where we go in Nantucket, um, at Nantucket Boat Basin. So in the future, I, I think that the future for Sacquatucket Harbor is very bright. I'm looking forward to being part of this uh, harbor plan moving the uh, ticket booth over uh, and working with John and seeing that vision come to fruition. So is there any specific questions that any members of the board have? Not yet, okay. but thank you very much sure. for the introduction. Anyone in the public wish to speak on this? Uh, good evening, my name is John Shorey. Uh, I just want to speak in, in favor of transferring the slip and permit to Jack Sheehan. I've personally known Jack for close to six years. We've uh, been co-captains over at Chatham's Bar Inn together for those times. 
And in that time of six years, there's never been an incident or altercation that Jack has been involved in. He's involved in a fish, couple of fishing tournaments that I'm involved in in a couple of years, uh, uh, Wounded Warriors uh, Project. And he'd be, I think he'd be a great asset uh, to the town. Uh, I've talked to him briefly about his, his plans, and they're all very positive, and I would recommend Jack uh, to fully to accept the transfer of the slip and permit uh, to him. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Any motion to close the public hearing? Move we uh, close the uh, public hearing on the transfer of the Freedom Ferry uh, slip and Class F permit. Second. Moved and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now on to the board. Larry? I, I have none. Uh, wish Jack good luck. Okay. Julie? Yeah, no, I don't have any either. Good luck with everything. You know? No. John? Uh, just a comment. Uh, I remember when the... Uh, the approval was given originally uh, for the slip and for the ferry uh, to, to run. And frankly, it, it's a real boon to the town to have this uh, because it's a conveyance over the Nantucket. So that uh, it's a real important thing. So my comment to you is don't screw it up. Because <laughs> it takes two slips to be able to do this. Uh, the op opportunity for that to occur, if one of them were to go away ever again, would almost never happen. Can I get a motion? So yeah, I move that we approve the application uh, to transfer the Freedom Ferry slip and Class F permit. Second. Moved and seconded to approve. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome, Jack, and uh, publicly thank Alan McMullen for his years of service to the town of Harwich. And uh, thank you're, you. you're, you're invited to move to Harwich, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut the commute out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up, public hearing on the transfer of an all uh, for an annual all alcohol in holder license from John F. Connell, DBA Cape Cod Clatta Inn and Irish Pub to Harwich Inn and Tavern LLC, DBA Harwich Inn and Tavern. Larry. Uh, I open the hearing. Uh, notice is hereby given under Chapter 138 of the General Laws as amended that application has been made to this board for a transfer of the annual in holder all alcoholic beverages license now held by John F. Connell, known as Cape Cod Clyde Inn and Irish Pub, 77 Route 28 West Harwich, Mass. John F. Connell manager to Harwich Inn and Tavern, LLC, known as Har Harwich Inn and Tavern, 77 Route 28, Harwich, Mass. James Sikulis, well, I hope I got that close, manager on the following described premises located at 77 Route 28 West Harwich, Mass. Indoor area approximately 3,350 square feet with six entrances and six exits. Outdoor area approximately 800 square feet. The Board of Selectmen will hold a hearing upon the application on Monday, May 14, 2018, no earlier than 6.30 p.m. in the Don B. Griffin Room at Town Hall, 732 Main Street, Harwich, at which time all interested parties will be heard. Signed by the uh, Board of Selectmen. Okay, we are in a public hearing. Anyone here to speak on behalf of the applicant or the transferee? Hi, I'm uh, James Shukalis. I'm the applicant. Great. And I look forward to uh, taking over uh, the property and uh, being a part of the Harwich community. Excellent. Thank you. Anyone in the public wish to speak on this? And a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in, fa all in favor? Yeah. We are closed. Uh, comments, John? Um, it's just a, a question uh, to the new owner. Uh, there have been, through the years, complaints about entertainment noise uh, going beyond the property. I mean, are you prepared to live within the confines of the, the actual license? For entertainment? Absolutely. I'm more in the inn and restaurant business than I am in the entertainment business, so I certainly will uh, abide by that. You know? I don't have anything. Good luck. Julie? I don't have anything. Larry? No, we're anxious for your success in that property. It's a great uh, location. And we're excited about it. Okay. Can I get a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the transfer of the annual all out. All alcohol inholders license from John F. Canal, D. 
doing business as Cape Cod Clava Inn and Irish Pub to Howard Inn and Tavern LLC, doing business as Howard Inn and Tavern. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the transfer as read. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Good luck. As I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, C is uh, postponed until next week. Moving on to new business, confirm appointment of Eugene Murphy to the position of mechanic, effective May 29, 2018, as recommended by the DPW director. Questions, John? No questions. I'd like to be willing to make a motion if I could. Have you all set now? I'm set. Okay. All right, go ahead and make a motion. I move we confirm the appointment of Eugene Murphy to the position mechanic effective May 29th, 2018, as recommended by the DPW director. Second. Moved and seconded. Chris, I only had uh, the question was this is not a, this is a new position. Um, it's a reallocation of a position. It's a reallocation of a position. We took someone from highway so and it was a greater need <coughs> for it as a mechanic. So the highway foreman decided to give up a position in order to have an additional mechanic. So the only other question, it mentions the union in the paperwork. We got the unions fine with this. The position exists inside the union. Oh, yes. Yep. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 B, uh, appointment of Judy Wilson to the Harwich Accessibility Rights Committee. Don and I, not Don and I, Janelle and I interviewed uh, Judy last week. Judy is a department head, council and aging. She lives in the town of Brewster. Uh, Janelle and I thought it would be more appropriate to put it on the open agenda for board discussion uh, because she is n a non-resident of Harwich. So here's the discussion. Don, you want to start? Yeah, actually, Janelle and I spoke about it also. It, 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 the, uh, the charter doesn't really give authority for a non-resident, but she is clearly uh, a wealth of information. And I think the answer here is to appoint her as an ex-officio position uh, to the committee so that we can share the wealth of her knowledge and stay within the confines of our appointment powers. Uh, there's, it's not a question that she owns a second home here. She doesn't own any home here. Uh, so, so your recommendation is for ex-officio, not an actual vo voting member, more for knowledge. But even that, I'd put it an expiration date on it just so that it keeps getting revisited. Sure. Okay. You know? I like that. Julie? Yeah, I would agree with that. Larry? And I'm okay with that. As Judy knows, she was one of the first, when she first was hired, I saw her out to uh, work with math and get on the committee because as we all get older, uh, problems with disabilities increase, and so she can add a wealth of information as well as a link to the Council on Aging as a whole in that group. So she's... Uh, um, I'm really pleased that she's stepping forward, another, another responsibility, so I, I fully support it. John, can I get a motion? Yeah, I move that we uh, accept the appointment of Judy Wilson to the housing, the Harwich Ex Accessibility Rights Committee as an ex officio position uh, by virtue of her position in the Council of Aging, on aging, uh, for expiration of June 30th, 2021. Second. Moved and seconded to approve as read. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Judy. Okay, next up is a 100% renewable energy letter. Discussion to vote uh, to sign letter of support. Is anyone here to talk on this? No. Um, Don, discussion on this? Kind of hard to have a discussion with nobody. Yeah. Julie? <laughs> We uh, have a discussion with us. Top that. <laughs> yeah, we're, I'll we're, just talk we're, to myself. We're going to talk to him, actually. Yeah. <laughs> talk to the ham. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I mean, yeah, we need somebody here, but I also, where we have a green uh, green energy, I mean, the green stamp. Um, green community? Green community. Mm -hmm. I always call it green stamp. <laughs> green community. You can always redeem it. You're showing your age, green stamps. I know, right? Um, but I think I would like to understand how they coincide, so yeah. I, I think that further discussion is required, so. That's what I meant. Uh, <laughs> Larry. Yeah, as presented here, I, I would uh, not be in favor of this. I, uh, you know, we're all for green energy, but Massachusetts in itself has a very uh, uh, active direction of green energy, and I couldn't decide on where this is going. It seemed to be kind of open-ended but to, uh, if we're more concrete in that, we're trying to force this at some deadline for green energy, I would uh, 
really argue since we have, we're moving in that direction and we have other needs. We have affordable housing, we have uh, income levels of people and this raises those prices. Uh, on the other side, uh, technology is getting better every day so this is becoming less expensive. So to, uh, I'm against a mandate that moves ahead with all the other stuff going on. And as Julie's mentioned, uh, we have green communities we're also working on. So I, I guess I'm disappointed we can't, I can't debate with anyone that's on this, but I would be, a, I'd be opposed to whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I, I don't see that it's mandating anything. It's just, I, I don't know what this group represents, uh, environmentmassachusetts.org. Um, if they're just trying to build their membership so that they have a little bit more of a legislative voice. Um, I don't see the harm in it, but I do think we need to talk to the woman, or you all need to talk to the woman, because I won't be here. Good luck. <laughs> Chris, can we uh, just send a letter saying if you want to invite her to a meeting? Because yeah, I'm, I'm completely against <coughs> raising our electric rates any more than they already are, and that's what this reads to me. But How, what? They're looking, Chris, at what? To make it 100% clean energy. That's more expensive. Um, all set with that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, review the revised First Congregational Church Cemetery Agreement. Chris? So, uh, Mr. Chairman, as the board's aware, uh, we had litigation uh, in which the town and the, the church over the uh, cemetery location, uh, the, the courts actually found in the cemetery's favor for a certain component. Uh, what this does is it memorializes uh, two things. One is that the uh, property is, in fact, owned by uh, the church, which is what the, the award of the judge was, uh, but the town no longer has to do any maintenance in terms of that cemetery. And the second component was uh, to have, it was a map that was generated or a plan that was generated for where the existing or known um, existing burial sites are of uh, full body burials. And in the agreement there was, uh, the judge did uh, also award uh, that there could be no more cremains buried on top of uh, existing and known burial sites. So this agreement just is basically an acknowledgement. It kind of uh, concludes the litigation uh, where it has an agreement based upon the judge's order. And how does it look, Chris, to you? Is legal, legal going? I think it's fine. Okay, and then in the letter to us, it mentions that approval by DPW director as well as Robin to look at it. I think it was just for the plan itself. It wasn't for them to approve. And I think the plan was based upon what we had submitted originally. Okay, so in your mind, we're good to vote on this? Yes. Okay. Yeah, sure. Julie? I just, uh, because our, the way we're looking at the plan, and I'm sure it's on here, but I just want to make sure that this is a stamped plan you know, an engineer's stamp plan. I see that it's by outer, outermost land survey. So I'm assuming it's stamped, but I don't I think that they actually just reviewed and used the, the one that we had provided to them. Okay. Because the, the plan that was shown was the one that we provided to them that had the ground penetrating radar. So they've confirmed what we submitted. Okay, because in terms of recording it and all, we'll, we'll want to make sure it's a stamped plan, I would think. I think we should just ask that question. Okay. And, you know. Let me see if we if we need to have it stamped. Okay. And we'll we'll do that if it's just part of the letter to close out the litigation, then that's sufficient. Okay. Do we want to make a motion pending the stamp, or do we want to bring it back to? It's up to you guys. Um, you know, I, I guess I would say pending. If the attorney says it needs to be stamped, then we'll have it stamped. If yeah. the if the letter of agreement is suffice, yeah. then yeah. we can have so it. So we don't have to bring it back, just to make sure that we're. You know, because if it should be a stamp plan and it's recorded without a stamp, it's useless. Mm -hmm. so. Can I get a motion? So, uh, <coughs> I will move that uh, we approve the, the revised First Congregational Church Cemetery Agreement with a pending review of whether or not the, stamp, the plan needs a engineer stamp. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to approve pending the uh, thing. Any discussion? Well, only that with all of the, the history of this, I think we need to really be sure that everything is legally correct. There's a stamp plan, so I would like for you to go back and just double check it. Mm -hmm. There's no no gaps at all because of the, 
This actually came, we have the materials came from KP yeah, Law, so it was originated, the agreement itself. So the only question really is the plan, and okay. I'll, I'll check with KP Law. And double check the, the details, yep. okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next up, reconsideration of vote on alteration of premises on liquor license for Ember Pizza. Um, you're all aware of the letter that we received from Attorney Kelly. Uh, on our February 26th meeting, we made, uh, looks like we made two different motions. We said two different things. Mr. Kelly, on behalf of the owners of Port and Ember, are asking us to reconsider our vote so that they can get their outdoor uh, patio open pending the uh, regulatory review, which we did on the Port, uh, but we did not do on the Ember. Don, you want to start? No, just as a point of information, Mr. Chair. I can't be part of the reconsideration vote. I could be part of an action if you vote to bring it back. Right. But I was on the opposition. No yeah. Right. Matt, any more summary than I gave? I, I think I gave a detailed email, and I think you have it. I just appreciate um, you seeing me on, on relatively short notice. I, 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 I had the opportunity to speak to Mr. Chairman about this, but I can assure everybody that this is not for lack of trying. We've been to the community development team. The plans are done. I talked to Coastal Engineering. They've done all the surveying. I expect the applications to be submitted hopefully by the end of this week. So this is just merely a stopgap solution to have the language mirror the port vote, which allows them to get open. They'll still require uh, temporary building permits. Um, but the um, community, the building and planning won't even consider anything temporarily unless the vote reads the way that the port vote reads. So I'm just asking the board to consider that. Uh, I really do think this is a, we're talking about a very short amount of time here. So <coughs> I'd ask Thank you to consider it. Thank you, Matt. Larry, okay. question? Well, just simply put, we're not talking substance and we're talking about timing. Is that correct? W well, I mean, we are, um, but I could understand, you know, I tried to suggest that the votes were the same, but the uh, community development team didn't agree with me. So, um, but yes, we're just talking about timing. I'm not asking anything different than we discussed before um, in our, on the February 26th hearing. I'm just asking the vote to mirror the port's vote. I think I laid it out in my, in my email. Yeah. Uh, Chris, any comments on this? I think you get community development meeting you were part of, so they were in. Yeah, I wasn't party to the, the latest meeting, but you know, I, I think it really is that the intent of the board is to you know, grant additional time. It does seem from the, the discussions I've had, it's just a matter of uh, the applicant hasn't been able to secure all the services to get the work done in a, as timely a fashion as we would have liked. Yeah, but it's or a, they. A busy, it's a busy you know, construction season out there, and I could see the, the reason <coughs> for the potential delay. So, Larry, can I get a motion to reconsider our vote I from February 26th? I move uh, that we reconsider the vote of, on alternate or premises on liquor license for Amber Pizza of, uh, what was the date again? February 26th, February 26, 2018. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to reconsider that vote. All in favor of the motion to reconsider? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. You're abstaining. Four and one abstention. Four, zero, Sir. one. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I get a new motion? Um, the motion that you laid out, Matt, I think uh, it says building within 90 days to be com to be in compliance with regulations. I'm not comfortable with the in compliance with regulations. If we're doing this okay. to submit the paperwork, that that makes sense. But we're not agreeing that you. I understand. Okay. No, that makes sense to me. So, Larry, if we could strike that uh, compliance with regulations and just make it more mirror the vote, the vote days. of the port. Yeah. Yeah. Me, yeah. Okay, I, I move uh, that we approve the application for the alteration of premises of the seasonal common victor or alcoholic beverage license by Amber Pizza Incorporated on premise, premises at 600 Route 28 Harwishport contingent on the applicant submitting necessary paperwork to plane and building within 90 days. Second. Of the February 20th. Of the oh, February uh, 28th, 19th, 2018. Moved and seconded. Discussion, Don. This is not new territory. I'm just going to say, first of all, we're about 90 days out already. But the application that goes to the ABC actually calls for a description of the premises. I can only it, that's what he's doing. I, right? I understand. That, that was approved. Except that there is no approved description. Yeah, that was approved. Yeah. All of it. The AB, if I may, Mr. Chairman, right. um, it, the ABCC did approve the alteration of premises. Um, and it did, in, the plans that were included were updated plans that included, would accurately reflect what's on the ground now. As so approved by the planning board? 
that, well, they hadn't been approved by the planning board yet, but that we had to submit plans. And that's how it bounced back, just so you know, Mr. Howell, that's exactly what happened. That's why we're here. So we applied for the amendment of premises. When we applied, uh, Mr. Clark contacted my office and said, well, planning and building want to weigh in. Because of the timetable, we submitted, this board made the vote that they did on the 26th. Since that time, the ABCC has, a pr has approved the, on a state level, the premises as they look now. We are now trying to comply with sort of what the original selectman's vote that you were against um, asked us to do. I only stated that, uh, Mr. Chair, because they approve what we send them. Uh, it, the, the description of the premises were not what was approved at the time by the town. It kind of seems backwards that you're arguing that they approved the language that we had submitted on the, the permit, uh, I mean on the uh, license request, but it still doesn't reflect the actual regulatory situation right now in terms of what's approved to be there. That's what's still open. Go ahead, Jim. So, so, so I'm just looking for clarification because I read that it was approved, and it looks to me like really what what we're doing is the the delay is in getting your site plan updated to show the <coughs> true con existing conditions because they hadn't been done in some time. That's correct. That's correct. Right. So the delay is really an engineering delay because of ultimately their schedule and they're probably flat out at this time? The, the coastal is one of the bus busiest right. engineering firms and that's who the brackets chose to use and unfortunately mm -hmm. we're at their mercy. Right. But that so would it's have a, to be it's approved by the planning board. Right. Right. And but it, he's submitting but to the planning board. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead Matt. But we, we still, like, this is all conditioned. I mean we're basically asking for a stop back. If the planning board ultimately says I don't agree with that site plan, they're going to be ordered to immediately shut down anything that's going on outside. I, I mean I understand we're sort of in conceptually putting the cart before the horse. But, but I, I don't agree that the, the state requires a necessary approval of site plan. That's not something the state looks at. The state looked at the premises, looked at the application, and approved it. So I mean, that's just the order it went in. But this, I, if the planning board shuts down the plans, it's effectively over. Right. And the planning, can I ask? Go ahead. And it's part of the planning board process to have the updated existing conditions plan, which is where... The which we've been working very hard with Charlene's met um, the town planner has met several times with um, the engineers out at the sites I think everything I'm not expecting any surprises on that but everybody's working to get in compliance and I think I told the board before the port is a very inconsequential change from the last time because they redid everything about five years ago the issue is Ember's last site plan that was submitted was Nick and Dick's so I mean it's yeah, it's, it's, it's requiring some work yeah. Chris do you have anything to add to this no, I, I do appreciate, I, I think Dawn's comments are, are valid in terms of, you know, state, accept, state acceptance is really based upon local acceptance, mm -hmm. and I think as long as the local acceptance is, you know, going to be forthcoming, then it's probably a not issue. If the planning board were to vote it down, then, then we would be back revisiting it with right. ABCC. Right. Yeah. Right. Matt, we have your assurance this is coming quickly. It's not, we're not waiting the 90 days and buying the summer, we're going to get no, on the planning. I, and, and I have spoken several times with Coastal's engineer. I have a draft um, site plan done for the port in my email right now, and I'm expecting embers tomorrow. So my goal is to have them both filed with the town by the end of the week, certainly by the middle of next week. So that, that's the kind of time lag we're talking about at the moment. Well, these are two great businesses and, and business owners that, that are doing a lot for the town of Harwich, and uh, this is a short season to make money, and uh, they really need to be open. So. With that, can I get a motion, Larry? Oh, we have yeah. the motion. We have a motion. Any other discussion? Uh, Don? Thank yeah, you. I Don. feel compelled to say something since uh, the chair said something. When they post first opened, and I was the chair of the board back then, I called for a special meeting within 48 hours to make sure that you got open for the beginning of the season. So I certainly agree uh, w with what the chair is saying about uh, evaluating the season and about the businesses. The question then becomes this particular vote, not, not about whether anyone values their business. Greg. And I'm happy, like I said, I think in our correspondence, I'm happy to come back and report to, to this board at, at your request at any time um, if this board's not happy uh, with the progress. I'm happy to do that. Thank you, Matt. Okay, so we have a motion. It's been seconded. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 4-1, Chris. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. Good luck, Janelle. Thank you.
All right, next up, recap of 2018 annual town meeting. I just put this on there in case anyone has any thoughts. I, you know, I'll start by saying I thought it was extremely successful. I thought the projects that, um, that the board wanted, uh, I think Chris Clark did an outstanding job with the department heads presenting those to CPC. Uh, I feel like we got a lot accomplished. Uh, so I, I put this on more uh, for general discussion. So I'll start with Julie. I think the town meeting went exceptionally well, and I was really happy with the outcome. I, I think that our priorities and, you know, the trust and uh, wastewater in particular, you know, I, I think that as much as it's been hard to educate people, I think that the word is getting out there. I think people understand the importance of it. I think there was healthy debate about certain issues, but overall I was pleased with the outcome, so. Okay. Larry? I agree. We tackled some major issues and uh, had good discussions, and, uh, and it went that way. Uh, I guess looking into the future, uh, I'm hoping that, uh, and I think that we have a good possibility of, of causing a, a, of um, of pausing right now. We we passed a lot of capital items, and it would be good to uh, do as much as we can to postpone other capital items for a few years and give everyone a break. Mm -hmm. And so we have some of our, I think our thinking going forward, I would I encourage us to do that. Thank you, Larry. Janelle? So um, town meeting itself, I thought uh, went very well. Large number of people there on night one, the most I've seen. 600. In my three years. Um, just one thing was went wrong for me and I, I'll share it now. Um, and this is, uh, you know, end of the night, first night, we're talking about Article 30. And um, I was sitting next to John Giorgio and I decided I would read the actual article while I was sitting there. And it wasn't the article that we had signed in our draft warrant. The verbiage had been changed. And so luckily Julie had a draft from March 12th, which was the date we actually signed the warrant, which is the date that was um, posted in the official warrant, and it says March 12th, and the verbiage was completely different. So I said to John, what's up with this? Isn't this against the rules? And he said, oh, I was told to change that. Didn't you know? And I said, no, I did not know. I don't think any of us know knew, but the funny thing is I asked to change this for multiple weeks in February and March, and it was not changed. So we had to sign it the way it was, and now it's different. Um, so I asked him to research when the request was made by Chris for him to come up with new verbiage, and it was March 21st. So this is a big deal to me. Rules are rules, rules were broken. And I want the public to know that. That's not okay. We have standards that we have to follow according to the state, according to our town, and um, that just kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. Other than that, I thought town meeting went great. I think that specific article was the language in the Harbor article. It was. And though it didn't change the vote at all, it's the lack of integrity that really leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Any comments, Chris? I think that really pertains to changing the article yeah I just uh, you know I certainly um, I've had my integrity attacked uh, numerous times over my career uh, you know we certainly will look at uh, the timing as my recollection is and I have not gone back uh, with the attorney Giorgio uh, but the plan that was or the warrant that was proposed to the selectmen I believe the selectmen the majority of the board of selectmen not all the selectmen but the majority of the board of selectmen asked for a change to be done after it was presented and whatever was done was done, in my mind, from my recollection, based upon the action of the majority of the board members. And I get it, you know, not, not all board members get what they want, uh, but my obligation is to follow the majority of the board and to do it consistently. So I will look at the dates. Uh, certainly there was no intention on behalf of administration to change things after a board of selectmen voted it in a certain way. May I respond to that? Mm -hmm. Chris, I did go back into the meeting minutes because when I did bring this up to the chair, he thought maybe we had voted to change the verbiage. And my recollection was 
that we did not. So I went back and I read the meeting minutes um, leading up to, and we never did vote to change the verbiage. Although if you look at the YouTube video, you, I, I asked to change it more than one time. Um, so it was, it was a shock to see that it was changed uh, and none of us knew it. Um, The, the recollection that I had that I did share with Janelle it was that we did talk, there was a word in there that, that uh, I do remember discussing that there was a word in there that would uh, maybe void the article. And, that, and I don't have the date, Janelle, I apologize for that. It's okay, I do. It's uh, March 6th and March 12th. Yeah. 6th or 8th? 12th and 7th. And I, th I think if that's the change, I do remember having that conversation. But Chris, if you could just please look into the dates. And yeah. Don, anything on this? <coughs> yes, sir. Just a town meeting. <laughs> Not uh, this. Thank you. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, going to go back to the spiritually high level here. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, the, the, no this, this is something that matters, uh, I think, to the town uh, after 300 plus years. Uh, a lot of people come into town and think that there's a better way of doing things. Uh, having grown up in Yonkers, which is arguably the second most corrupt city in the uh, eastern <laughs> seacoast uh, other than Jersey City. The idea of being able to invite your, your fellow residents into a room and ask them for their opinions and for their guidance about what they want to see happen as opposed to the who let that happen mode of government uh, is refreshing. The, for those people who feel like it's only about 17 families that control the town at town meeting, the 650 people say otherwise. Uh, so I think it's terrific. I'd love to see anything that we could do to keep that up or to even add to that attendance because there has, at one other occasion, uh, been that kind of <coughs> attendance. Uh, it's great. I mean, it's, it happened when people got off the Mayflower and formed the Mayflower Compact. And I, I personally feel like this, this really was a refreshing reiteration of the fact that the townspeople own the town. They, they came out, they gave their opinions, and, I agree with Larry that uh, largely uh, there was a lot of debate, spirited, they said what they wanted. Uh, th and I also think that the message coming out of this is, gosh, we need a break. So we, we need to think about that as the year goes by. Thank you, Don. Chris, do you want to add anything? I, I, as from a um, operation standpoint, you know, I, I think that town meeting, uh, I thought went very well, uh, having the projector to show locations, you know, a lot of staff time, a lot of my time goes into trying to make sure that 69 articles are, you know, received due consideration. I think my first year here, we had five or six citizen petition ones. I think Larry was on the board at yeah. the time. And I think uh, exactly. five out of the six <laughs> were ruled kind of out of order. So the, the fact that uh, you had uh, 69 articles that had the ability to be considered, I think one, there was uh, some wording that was some concern and it had to be withdrawn. But you know, I thought you know, pretty good to be able to have that material. And I, I think town meeting uh, certainly with some of the very favorable votes in, in my experience on some very controversial issues, I think the one thing that at least my administration has tried to do is to make sure that we educate people to make sure they can make an informed decision. And I think that we, we have been continuing to make more and more progress. And it's not just me, but all the department heads, certainly. I, I appreciate your comments, Mr. Chairman, that uh, I thought that, um, I, I think I even said this, that it was gonna be a tough slog to get CPC to vote all the board priorities. And I think it was a tough slog, but in the final analysis, it worked out very well. I think I said I didn't think three times would be a charm on Hinkley's Pond, and I was very happy to be proven wrong, and very happy that town meeting voted that uh, overwhelmingly. Also, I, I did think I did have uh, some comments with folks that you know I, I thought some comments in regards to the Judah Eldridge property, uh, you know that was made more controversial by misinformation. I think that was provided out there, uh, and I was happy to see that the uh, the, the people at town meeting. Uh, respected uh, some of the work that we do. Some of these issues are, are very technical from a legal perspective and we've done the best we can to try to uh, have that be uh, shown and the need for it. Uh, but overall, I was very pleased as the administrator to, to have a clean and organized town meeting uh, for the board, you know, for the board's considerations to be heard. 
and vote in favor of it, which is obviously what we strive for. Thank you, Chris. Chris, could we ask for a um, some timelines? A lot was approved. There's a lot of work now that needs to be done. Uh, for instance, the library, so that we don't fall short of uh, another season that it can actually be painted. Yeah, at the next department head meeting, um, I'm going to take and I convert the board, you know, the, um, the layout, the one-liners, and put in there the department heads responsible for what. So we'll we'll start to get some timelines on those okay. specific items. And then with the passing of the grant for the harbor, are we going to have a bathroom in the uh, maintenance shack now? Is that part of that, or are we still? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, I think that's it. Okay, moving on to the town administrator's performance evaluation. This is an this is an interesting process to me because Chris is the only town employee that um, gets a gets a review in public on TV. Is that correct, Chris? That's I guess that's why he makes the big bucks without commercial interruption. But um, okay. you know the board has not um, as of today given their all their reviews in so they could be into the packet tonight for the public uh, I spoke to Chris before the meeting tonight and uh, Chris gave me the nod that it was okay that we bring this back next week we'll have a discussion on it now but next week doesn't mean that the reports that are in can wait another four or five days fast practice which is probably a bad way to say it but since I've been on the board the board the sitting board does the review not the next board so Janelle has gotten her review in. Uh, I'm sure she wants to make some com comments on her review tonight. Uh, but for the public, the performance evaluation and the media will be in next week's packet. Um, we'll have a basic conversation tonight and, and would certainly answer any questions or comments from Chris. But Chris, Chris has graciously given us until next week to get those in, which will give him some more time to review even the ones that he got, he didn't get until today. So um, Chris is going to need some time to digest it and make some comments. He'll want to make some comments, I'm sure. Um, with that, Julie, uh, we discussed earlier today you had some questions. I think why don't we start with those questions. Yes, I will go up here. I do have questions on the actual um, I knew you'd say that. format because as I, as I went through it, um, again, I, I just find that it's, um, well, I guess I have to pull it up here. Um, I find the format difficult and, and, you know, I went through again and I'm evaluating and I do the bulk, but the first portion that we're going back to the previous year, listing and allotting points. I find it difficult. They also don't know that it really makes a lot of sense. So there's that issue. On the other end, going through the, the chunk of it, the meat of it, it is not as difficult. Um, but the end of the, uh, the um, format doesn't make a lot of sense to me either. And then we're being asked to create future priorities, and I think that's a great idea. However, in terms of putting it into Chris's evaluation, I don't really know that that's the time or the place, and I think that's a discussion that needs to happen amongst the board. I don't think that it belongs in his evaluation. So I, I'm having difficulty scoring this, and in any which way I do it, I don't feel like it's a it's a fair reflection of anything. So that's my difficulty. So as I, as I continue to try to process it, I finally said, I can't. I, you know, I have too many questions here. I think I need further discussion. And Chris, I do apologize for not having it for tonight, mm -hmm. but I feel like in fairness to you, it, it really needs more um, paring down of, of the accomplishments of what we're trying to achieve and how we're trying to rate those accomplishments. So that's my problem with it. So 
three, two years ago, we used the same form and we had the same discussion. Last year, we all did it in a letter form and we had agreed that we were going to, Chris as well, was going to work on this form. That's something that we didn't get to. Um, so it is what we have. And it's the same form that Chris uses for the department head. Mm -hmm. So No, I understand that. I, I, but the problem for me is that, right. is that we've had these discussions and I, I'm not pointing the finger at anybody because we've had a lot on our plate this year and I, we've accomplished a lot. Ultimately, though, I, I find that this is one thing that we didn't get to, and it does require further discussion in all fairness all around for the board and for Chris. So that's my problem with it. So I, I understand that we've talked about it, but I guess my point is I think we need to talk about it again. Right. <laughs> no, and we need, I think we need, I think, and I think Chris agrees, and I think that it's, it is a difficult form to... And I think sometimes the, grit, the scoring on it reflects the difficulty of the form. Right. And I think that that's you know, one thing Chris and I talked about, I think it was three years ago when the scores were not really that great. Um, so I think that this is something we need to revisit, but this is what we have for this year. So we have to figure it out. Larry did an addendum, yeah, sorry. a second letter. I did, I did a second uh, piece to it, so Chris had more of an explanation than just the... Uh, yeah, and, and the reason I did that is I could figure out no way of typing in that little oh, box. Oh, yeah, that too, right. So mechanically it was impossible. But I think to uh, Julie's point as well, I find it difficult because you have a scoring system and then you try to relate uh, you know, my review to the scoring system. And you know, no one's all bad, no one's all good. Right. So you end up putting a score in there that maybe meets expectations but I think in each of those, I could point out and did point out where I saw sufficiencies. That doesn't mean it's, you know, it affected the point total per se. But I think in each performance review, as you're not looking at, uh, you know, we're always looking for improvement, you know, high quality. So you're always pointing those out as well. So that's the discussion we need. But I found it difficult to relate to, relate the two. Go ahead, Julie. So and and that's a good point too. So you know, as we're looking through, I mean. You know, if you're gonna say that one thing wasn't, you know, one thing was really good, and one thing was maybe needed improvement, you know, that shouldn't be carried throughout because right. they're either, you know, demerits. <laughs> right. That shouldn't be, you know, it should be evaluated in one section, and not have an opportunity to, you know, negate, 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 or positive. I mean, in all fairness, the other thing is that, you know, if we're going to do these to your point about timeliness, we should be doing them in a way that we can all be looking at things and trying to look at <coughs> each other's as well because we all bring up different points and different conversations that are helpful in determining because we don't remember every single thing. Right. However, I didn't see anything in the packet till today and I was in uh, you know, interviews till three o'clock this afternoon and back to work. So I didn't even get a chance to read those and again, no one got a chance to read mine because I didn't finish it. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, those were all helpful to all of us in terms of trying to come up with a better way to evaluate. So, you know, I, I think that going forward, we'll, we'll certainly have to deal with this next week, and, and we will. But I also think that, you know, for dec you know, for the next time we're doing this, that we should a lot more time that we can share those conversations. So, I th you know, on that, Julie, I think that the process and I think uh, I mentioned it to Chris earlier tonight there's new I think new state law out there that you're not supposed to discuss it they're supposed to be done independently I think we can discuss general discussion before we do the review but I don't think that we should really be basing our reviews at all on what anyone else says well so we should but my point is more about <coughs> how we're evaluating so we need to whatever new format we're going to come up with we need to figure out where we're all going with the current one that doesn't work. Because without looking and sharing what, what we're saying works and doesn't work, and I, I certainly understand that, that if you've got a form that works, you evaluate based on your opinions and, and uh, interactions. But if you have a form that doesn't work, you need to have that board figure out what does work. Otherwise, we're, we're working ineffectively. I think at the close of this debate, we're going to assign you the reevaluation form. For That's next fine. Year. I'll take that. <laughs> well, and I, if I, you know, <laughs> it'll be check, check, check. <laughs> so, um, 
just like last time that we used this form, my numbers come in very low because we had six goals, but we have eight spaces in the first place. The last goal, last evaluation is goals. We have it's a total of 40 points and it has eight lines, but we only have six goals. So what am I supposed to do there? So, so two zeros were given because I don't have anything to fill in there. I've only got six. Um, otherwise, it was a pretty good, actually. You know, I gave three fours, I gave two threes and one two. That's, that's pretty good. And, and if there were two others, who knows? It may have been threes and fours. Um, further, the future goals and objectives. Get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Because every year, the Board of Selectmen changes and new goals and objectives are created, and they're not even presented until sometime between August and October. So this makes no sense. So, so for me, Chris lost nine points there because I don't know what to do there. I don't know what to say. Um, that's no, not good for him. And I brought this up two years ago that this particular form is actually <coughs> not doing Chris a good service. The other thing I would suggest is Right now, meets expect expectations is three out of five. I think that's absurd. Meets ex expectations, it should be a four point system in my opinion. It should be unsatisfactory, needs improvement, meets expectations, and goes above and beyond. That's it. We have right now two goes above and beyond. <coughs> that's very um, ambiguous in my brain. Um, so I think it should be four, not five. I'm just giving you the more points mm -hmm. for next for the next time. And um, what else did I want to say about this? Um, I also, th yeah, here's the other thing I want to say. I think it's really important to also only look at current year. And I say this because Chris included in his self-evaluation a letter from Danette Gonzalez uh, praising him for his work as the wastewater, su I mean, excuse me, the water superintendent. Well, that ended on May 31st, 2015. So I don't think that's relevant for an evaluation in 2018. So I think it's very important to stay within the current year only and not, you know, if he's here for 25 years and someone wrote a letter that in, you know, 2010 he did such and such and wow, I'm so psyched. That's not a point. That's gone. So things like that. Scott? Yeah. John? Thank you, Mr. Chair. A as one of the two who's limping across the finish line here with uh, the evaluation, I agree with all that's been said before, and I also agree with uh, the chair that uh, about comparing each other's uh, mm -hmm. comments. I'm just going to reserve this conversation uh, to what I'm looking at here, if, if it were actually associated with an appraisal of me. It, it, it's daunting. It does not really appear, uh, and this kind of addresses where we need to go in the next year. It, it's difficult if the purpose of an evaluation is to give honest critique to the performance of somebody for the purpose of improving their performance in the next uh, rating period. I'm not sure where to go with this because I, it's confusing. Janelle particularly made some very good points. Uh, if I could put my Ouija board out and figure out what our goals and objectives are so that we could score him for them, that would be terrific. Mm -hmm. But some of this really is about reading us. Uh, so all in all, I think we need to do a better job because uh, if, we need, if we're complaining about the direction that the town administrator is taking us in at times, we need to be clear about what we're rewarding and what we're not. And we're not doing that at the moment. And so I will do my best to put, you know, whittle down my square peg and put it in a round hole mm -hmm. for this year, but we, we gotta do better. And I think Janelle may have a point there too, is like, other than Chris printing money so that we make a profit next year, I'm not sure how you get to a five. Uh, yeah. It's so it really needs to be a better and more honest uh, discussion of what it is that we expect, uh, and it should be clear about where the areas uh, are that it pertains to. So just um, if we could, everyone else that works for the town got their two percent. They got their cola at town meeting. Chris is the only one that's waiting on that, and this performance evaluation judges that. So if we could please get those in yeah, quickly yeah. so that Chris can read them and know that he got it or didn't get it and we can be prepared for next town meeting. My apologies to Chris. Our next meeting. Chris, you want to add anything to this conversation? <laughs> <coughs>
a lot, I guess, I'd like to add, but um, in, in light of, uh, I have not had a chance to, to really review the uh, comments. Just on the document itself, I, mean, I don't know if it was a perfect evaluation. You know, I think part of the reason why we didn't revise it is, you know, I know, we, I know Mr. Uh, Chairman looked and, you know, was trying to find something that's a better vehicle. I did take a stab at, at trying to do some revisions. Yeah, it, it's it's tough, it, you know. It, quite honestly, when you when you're the uh, chief administrative officer of a sixty-five million dollar a year operation with twenty-two different department heads, I mean, how do you grade yourself? And you know, uh, the goals and objectives is one area. You know, have I come close to hitting those or, or achieved some of those? Uh, and then certainly the the skill set of how do I do things. You know, I mean, quite honestly, I kind of compare myself to other towns and other town administrators, and, you know, I think I do a, a good service for the town of Harwich. Uh, I think I gave myself a, a grade that reflects uh, that I do think, uh, as a fellow professional in other towns, that I, I certainly am rendering a good professional service to the town of Harwich. We're addressing some of the needs uh, that exist before the community. And as the chair said, I mean, I, I do take this personally in terms of, you know, if I'm giving a bad grade that uh, when we grade people in the organization that you give somebody less than a satisfactory score or less than a three, you're saying they should depart the organization and they're not, not worthy to be an employee. And, you know, if that's, if that's the intent, then, you know, let me know and we'll have that conversation. But I have a hard time reconciling in a good way when the chairman and other comments are that we had a great town meeting and a lot of the board's objectives were captured and, and accomplished, well, I like to think that that's why you have me here, to, to deliver those. So we deliver it on one side, and if we deliver and have a good town meeting and a lot of the board's objectives are, are accomplished, and I'm the primary vehicle to help get that done on behalf of the organization, um, you know, how can I have a a really substantially bad score. So I, I have a hard time as a professional kind of reconciling that. And unfortunately, it's like kind of making sausage, I guess. You know, you don't want to have all this stuff discussed in public, but it is what it is, and I signed up for this a long time ago. Uh, so you have these discussions in, in public. But um, certainly whatever the board is, um, you know, wants to do, I appreciate, and certainly my own, uh, just looking at the last week, I'm exhausted just from even this morning coming in, kind of doing interviews first thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot going on. We will put together a plan to start to implement uh, the, the very successful town meeting and, and see if we can get working on this and lay out a, a plan for what needs to be done over the next year to continue progress for the, on behalf of the residents of the community. Julie. And just so, Chris, just so you understand from my, my perspective is that exactly to your point is that, uh, you know, I'm looking at it and having a hard time evaluating you fairly. And so, yeah, I, I hope you don't partake in my terms of delay as being uh, trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to make sure that you're evaluated fairly in, in the way that I would evaluate and want to be evaluated. So uh, I don't, I, it's not easy to use a form that I feel like you're not getting the proper points. So that was my problem with it. So just to be clear. Yeah, and just on that, you know, as an administrator, I, I think in uh, one town I've had uh, numerous changes. You know, it's a difficult job. I mean, I've, Larry's was initially consistency for me, and then he left, and now he's back again. But, you know, I've been here four and a half years, and I've had all new people. Right. And, you know, it, it takes some skill and, and ability, I think, to try to read people, see what they want. And I do appreciate that I've had good conversations with the majority of board members on an individual basis. And that makes my work easier to know where you are and know where I stand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, certainly, um, you know, I want to make sure that I have some stability. I do appreciate the board giving me a three-year contract that has let me think longer term in, in terms of that. So I think we are uh, getting more and more on the same page. And, and I appreciate that, at least from my end. Thank and, you. And, uh, and to uh, uh, reiterate what I, I said before, you know, I look at the score here, but I always try to include some improvement activity as well, because that's where I was growing up, I guess, you know, I'm always trying to get somewhat better. I would, uh, I, I made a joke of it a little bit a couple weeks ago, but this nine point thing at the, at the end, I find ludicrous. I have no idea what to do with that. I mean, I signed nine points because why not? 
Right. Well, that's yeah. But, but it has no. I can't figure out what the meaning is. Mm -hmm. the, the other comment I would make is, is uh, I think oftentimes. That, well, my personal judgment is is that uh, they have some difficulties at the end of the performance review. There's a breakdown of communication during the year. You know, it shouldn't come at the end. There should be some some communication throughout the year. And I think we've been we've, we've actually been pretty good at doing that. You know, good or bad. We've had criticism about that, but. I would suggest we look at a uh, uh, some type of a quarterly review so we don't get ahead of it, so it doesn't come to a one that once a year rating. And it could be uh, uh, maybe some of the more intangible things, you know, how we're working, how Chris feels he's working with us. You know, it's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we don't put it off until – I'm uncomfortable with a one, one shot a year look because a lot of things happen. And put a little effort in that and a few, few key points – and have that discussion. Julie's on it. Can we all agree I'm that I'm we, uh, that. Chris, even you, would start working on this right away? We talked about it again two years ago, and we didn't do it. So mm -hmm. even your wife mentioned that she hated this forum. So <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that comment. So <laughs> moving on to the town administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I did leave at your uh, places this evening. I, I have had um, just before town meeting had started a. Uh, inquiry from uh, the Cape Tech uh, superintendent in regards to, uh, you know, what opportunity for waiver of fees is there. Uh, and we had originally looked at uh, Monomoy, uh, a fair amount of the Monomoy ones were, were paid. Uh, and we did have a very specific request in for the site plan review for the special permit. I know uh, Mr. McManus is in the, in the crowd. Uh, and what we were able to find, I uh, asked staff to look uh, back in December of 2012 for, specifically for a site plan review for the special permit, there was a waiver, uh, not a complete waiver, but a, a um, vast majority of a waiver, a $30,000 fee. It was waived by the board for 26000 and the net paid was only 4000 I know that uh, Monomoy is a little bit different that for every bill that we get relative to Monomoy, we pay anyway. 72, 72 cents on the dollar. Uh, for Cape Tech, it is a little different. We're only, I think, 14% of the, the total. Uh, but at, at least in one of the researches that we did, uh, we, we did have a fair amount that was paid. At least the information that I have and I left at your places for this evening is we, we did do a waiver on the um, planning board fees uh, and certainly, I think that uh, if the board's okay with this, I would like to have uh, the fee get reviewed as submitted by Cape Tech, and we treat them at least consistent with how Monomoy was treated uh, through that process. If, if that's something the board would like me to pursue, then I can certainly pursue and, and maintain some continuity. Uh, certainly, if the board believes, and certainly an argument can be made, that which would absorb a lot of costs to do this work, to do the review of the construction of a building, and we get 14% of the value because only 14% of the population is related to Harwich, and we're subsidizing the other towns. I think Monomoy was a little bit different. Uh, but, you know, I think either way, and it's all taxpayer dollars, if we're able to absorb it, I think that we can absorb it and save the taxpayers too. So uh, this is really a, a board preference in, in my mind. Uh, the, at least the starting point for me would be why don't we at least consider treating Cape Tech the same as we treated Monomoy, no more, no less. Don, any comments? Yeah, I'm going to feel like the guy who goes home and takes, plucks the wings off of butterflies uh, <laughs> for saying this, but uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, I'd feel somewhat differently if there was a different beginning to this thing. The way they, uh, they operate, the the approval to get the funding for the building was region-wide. I mean, it really had nothing to do with town by town by town uh, in terms of when that, when that came out. That's first. Second of all, we're the host town in, in terms of what it is that we have to do for police, fire, uh, and other things. Um, we do represent 14% uh, uh, what we're paying uh, for the building, but they, they've got bonding. They've got uh, the building. If it were built anywhere, it, uh, it would cost them something to go in front of the regulatory bodies and, and get permits. Uh, 
I, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about the, the waiver, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, I approve, but I, I, it's a school. Um, I would support the waiver. The other thing is it is um, a shelter for our townspeople, and many people have utilized it this winter. Um, so regardless of the 14%, we're also utilizing it uh, in emergency situations as well. Um, at least the majority of the people who go there probably are from Hard Edge. So I would support it. I, I, I think uh, following the same steps we did with Monomoy is a good idea at this point. Julia? Yeah, I also think, you know, I, and I understand your point, Don. I, I really do because ultimately, you know, it is here and resources are expended. But, you know, by not waiving the fees, we only cost everybody a little bit more money anyway, you know, in terms of the overall project cost. We, when the project is calculated based on square footage and permit fees are assessed, <coughs> that, that's monies that really add up. And so we're all paying it anyways. So waiving those fees, it being a school and for educational purposes, I, I don't really have a problem with that. Larry? Yeah, I, I actually do have some problems with it. <laughs> well, only because of simple math, you know, we, uh, it's regional school, we're all paying a percent. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, why is this different than the rest of the building? Why are we paying 14% <coughs> and other towns paying a percent of, uh, based on the, uh, on the same rules? You know, just, just black and white, I guess, you have it uh, going both ways. So I, uh, uh, I'm not going to argue along on it, but it just seems like we already have a, a uh, dividing payments based on student enrollment and why we pull this out and treat it differently. I support it. So there's three to two. Three to two. <laughs> <laughs> in favor of being treated as monomoy. I couldn't even remember a vote on we're the, uh, <laughs> We're giving a consensus. We, we, you know, we're the host community. This is a school. We're lucky to have that school in this town. The, the overwhelming majority of the population supported this school. It's a, it is a regulatory. Certainly it shouldn't cost us money. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that Monomoy you know, paid the $4,000. But uh, one way or another, we're paying for it, whatever percentage it is. And in, in, in the budget, in the overall picture, we're talking twenty-six thousand uh, dollars. I think that this would be a uh, the right thing to do. So, Ed, did you want to speak briefly? With the Monomoy um, project, there was the 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 issue of the the, the planning fees, which uh, which given um, there was actually a disagreement of the extent of which uh, the local jurisdiction uh, had over uh, Monomoy because it was a school. Mm -hmm. um, and so the uh, review that the planning board does was not as extensive as you would have had for a similar size private project. Um, and that's the basis on which the, that fee was substantially reduced. Um, with the building inspection fees, because it's controlled construction, there was a negotiation between uh, the fee that was charged and what you would have calculated as uh, uh, using the the, uh, the town's fee schedule. And it actually, I believe, it was about half of the fee for building. Um, the fee for the plumbing and electrical were left as is because those inspectors um, get paid uh, when they show up and, and the town needed to do that. And, you know, as chairman, as a selectman, sitting selectman at the time and chairman of the building committee, I argued that, you know, this, we needed to charge those fees because it was being one, it was a shared project between two towns, but it was also, there was a third party half of those fees were being paid by the state. Mm -hmm. And by the state, I mean the taxpayers throughout the Commonwealth. And that's the same uh, for this project. So not only do you have 12 other towns that should be assessed uh, their portion of the fees, but and I'm not exactly sure what the percentage is. Is it 40% that the ta state's picking up? 
that 40% of those fees ought to be borne by the Commonwealth as a whole. So, and Chris, with the vote, with the consensus, we're talking about treating them the same. So we're, we're talking about the same, the same process. Yep. So it's not, I uh, I we'll still, this will still come back to us, the new board. Thank okay. you. The uh, next one is just a reminder again on the election ballot. So the election is tomorrow from uh, 7 to 8. There are candidates on there for election two. I didn't want to necessarily shortchange that. Uh, but the ballot questions themselves, one, two, and three, one is for the, uh, just as a reminder, folks, is for the sewer project, uh, two is for the roadway th projects or the community, and three is for the fire station, uh, four through six, uh, due to town meeting actions, don't have the same relevance that they had when they were originally put on, and seven is related to the charter changes. On the CDM Smith progress report, I think I had in the package, uh, I've been trying to include in here as we get uh, services invoices just to kind of give a, a flavor. Uh, so they are in the process of refining the sewer profiles for phase two. We know what streets are covered and, and approximately where. Uh, we are getting down into the specific locations for uh, where the pump stations are necessary, the six, six pump stations. And in the activities completed during this past period, they did do a update of the probable construction costs. Uh, some of what they're looking at for next is to continue the development of the d drawings on the pipeline and pump stations, uh, prepare a letter to the utility companies providing information on phase two in the sewer program, prepare and present for a public meeting. Uh, I would say we already have that. And the conduct a uh, monthly progress meeting. We do have meetings with uh, Harwitz and Chatham. Uh, certainly, if the election goes and that we are con continue to allow to continue with this project, then there will be uh, construction timelines will be uh, then laid out. Uh, if there's not a favorable vote, then there'll be other discussions we have to occur. Chris, specifically with CDM Smith, I had asked a while back for the number they were charging us for the brochure, the work on the brochure. Can you get that for us? Yeah. I have one, uh, one question or one uh, comment, Chris. Can uh, I'm reminded today that there's somewhat, there's a bit more than a, uh, a third of the roads we're talking about are private. And so I'm anxious that you start the uh, easement discussion to, you know, if it does go well tomorrow, start the easement as soon yeah. as possible, because that can be, as you know, better than I do, yeah. a time consuming process. Yeah, I did uh, have a discussion with uh, Attorney Giorgio and informed him. I think we have that letter that shows all the streets and the locations and that identifies town <coughs> versus uh, private and asked him to look. Uh, I think he was supposed to come in and because of town meeting was Tuesday for yeah. his office hours and we missed each other because it was right after town meeting. Uh, but we will get him activated on looking at those 10 streets in particular. Uh, if I may continue this. Uh, does, uh, can, will Link be assigned part of that as well? He's, I know he's done easements on, on road work to help us uh, maybe be a little more economical from cost savings going forward. Is there a role for town staff on that? In terms of, of I don't know if of I talking, you. doing the easements, talking to people and going, doing the road work. Yeah, actually there will be savings because actually I, I have done them in the past myself okay. in terms of uh, putting sewer pump stations on people's property. Uh, so I am familiar with doing those negotiations. Okay. So I, I'm actually planning on doing that myself, maybe with um, Megan or uh, Dan Pelletier to kind of accompany me. Okay. And certainly Lincoln is one that I would consider too. Okay. But it will be done in-house. And then just, I, you know, I, I guess uh, it's been three years and I, I just wanted to uh, thank Janelle for her service. I would definitely say at times we, we've been uh, colorful. Uh, and I think also that, um, you know, I, I think that your uh, devotion to the middle school project and, and converting that to a cultural center, you know, I thought was uh, something that I've seen in public officials that you don't always see that passion and desire to accomplish something on behalf of folks. And I think that you were a steward, a good steward of that. I know that that. Uh, I know that that uh, definitely drove me to trying to produce a good result, uh, you know, really on your behalf for your passion to, to do that. So thank, you. thank you. And that concludes my comments, Mr. Chairman. Selectman's report, Don. Nope. All set. Janelle. I just want to say thank you to all of you. 
um, and past people that I've served with, uh, Linda, Peter, and Angelo. Um, I have learned a lot sitting here and in all the other meetings and all the emails. And um, I'm going to miss it. And if it was a paid position, I would be here. But <laughs> <laughs> I just, the amount of time it takes to do this job is uh, incredible. And uh, being a single parent, it, it's just impossible to continue. Um, but that being said, I'm not going too far. I uh, will be applying for various committees next month. So I'll see you at the interviews. <laughs> Julie. First of all, I want to say thank you, Janelle, for everything you've brought to the table. And I would agree that you brought passion, commitment, and again, I can't even begin to describe how, how much I admire you for doing this. Being a single parent, not an easy task. Thank so you. it's been a joy working with you. I know you'll do great things, and I wish you the best. Thank you. I've Sorry. enjoyed our debates. <laughs> 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 And you've, you've actually won most of those, I think. So I, I'll go back oh, really? and, uh, Thanks. And, and practice arguing some more. I did want to comment that uh, uh, Don was at Monday night's meeting and in great pain the whole night. Mm. I know I was sitting next to I, him. I was in great so pain all night. This you were, well, that too, As but usual, that's normal. <laughs> but I do, uh, I, I'm not going to say I applaud you, but it's the extra effort to be there at that time. Uh, deserves appreciation. So thank you, Don. Thanks, Don. Thank you. Thanks, Don. You're welcome. Mm. Tell us about the dog. The dog has to highlight the Tommy. Oh, the dog. oh the right, dog. dog. I loved him. <laughs> I want that dog. <laughs> uh, Janelle, just thank you. It's been a great three years. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Motion to adjourn? So moved. We are adjourned.